You are listening to Down Home. The War of 1812 fought between the United States and Great Britain stands out as a pivotal conflict that shaped the course of North American history. It was characterized by a series of intense naval battles and ground warfare, culminating in the burning of Washington, D.C. Native Americans played a crucial role in the conflict, with leaders such as Tecumseh leading indigenous resistance against American expansion. Canada, too, felt the weight of this war deeply viewing it as a defining moment in its history. The successful defense against American invasion forged a strong sense of Canadian nationalism and identity, distinct from both the United States and Britain. Amidst the turmoil of the War of 1812, there exists stories often left untold. Enslaved African Americans seized a chance for freedom amidst the chaos of conflict. Their narratives a powerful yet often overlooked aspect during this time. Join us as we take a look at what this event meant for African Americans in their struggle for freedom. I'm Derek Wise and on behalf of Jay Jones, welcome to Down Home, the Canadian experience from two black men. So yeah, I think we wanted to go over this particular topic because, you know, because of our, our both of our family histories mm-hmm. that can be traced back to the Black Loyalists, which came to Nova Scotia in like 1790, Eight. 1780. When was it? I think. I was just looking at it today. I know. Isn't that something? We talk about it enough, don't we? 1782. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 1782 to 85 is when like that's basically when our roots came to nova scotia right yeah yeah um, and there were there were three waves of sort of a black migration mm, to and the last one being the war 1812 yeah so essentially we haven't really talked about it in in no. uh in uh in a lot of detail mm-hmm. um like first off i guess what is the War of 1812? In the years leading up to the War of 1812, tensions grew between the United States and Britain. Britain, trying to control the world's ocean, seized around 400 American merchant ships and their goods between 1807 and 1812. This angered many American officials who felt these acts of aggression were unwarranted. In 1812, American armies invaded British North America, or what is known as Canada now. The invasion took place on three different points, near Detroit, Queenston Heights, and a little bit north of New York. The Americans were hoping to gain territory and weaken British influence in North America. However, all three campaigns failed, with the Americans unable to make significant gains. British forces offered freedom to enslaved people who fled their American slave owners to join them. This promise of liberation led thousands of enslaved individuals to take the risk of seeking refuge with the British, viewing them as potential allies in the fight against slavery. An example of this is British Admiral Alexander Cochrane. He issued a proclamation offering freedom to any enslaved person who joined the colonial marines. This was a powerful incentive for many. There was also the Colored Corps, a unit of black troops who fought bravely against the Americans at Queenston Heights and Fort George. For these soldiers, the war was about more than just defending their homes. It was a fight for their freedom. Uh, you know, the, the good old Brits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, uh, in their attempts to control the, uh, the seas, like they had the at the time, you know, around 1800, the British had the largest navy, mm-hmm. probably. The only people that the only nation that probably rivaled them was the French, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But um, uh, yeah, yeah, it uh, yeah, and because of those ships being brought, uh, a lot of the blacks were able to escape. Yeah. And uh, they went to seek refuge on those ships for the British. And then mm-hmm. that's sort of how it became. Hey, if you join our fight, we'll promise you this and we'll promise you that. And, you know, yeah, you don't have anything. Your sense of self, you, you know, you you were a slave for however many years. You're going to take the opportunity to seek freedom. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But just like just like their war of independence, the Brits. Essentially leaned on uh american slave labor labor to try and defend canada so just like the just like the war of independence they said hey you know you fight for our cause you'll be able to gain your freedom kind of thing yeah and they did it they did it well Mm -hmm. there was lots of blacks that fought diligently with courage Mm -hmm. um just you know and they they knew the cause was for their freedom you know yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, it's crazy, man. Mm-hmm. And wow. and this is a this is a crazy, you know, even just sort of, I mean, I don't know at all, but just some of the research I was looking through, like I can't believe I didn't even really know this story either. Like how how deep it does go, and how it's connected to everything, and how the sort of same outcome is the same thing. You know, when blacks when those blacks got here, they they did they weren't really happy. They, no. they couldn't deal with the climate change. Yeah. They couldn't deal with the land that they were given, which was 10 acres of land. But, uh, of course, it was ticketed. It wasn't – there were no land deeds, grants, mm. giving. So they couldn't sell for profit. And what I find was interesting is, you know, with these waves of migration, when, the, when more white immigrants came, uh, it made it even harder for the blacks to sort of uh, survive. Um, and uh yeah so that's when sort of they sort of started changing their mind of being in canada Mm, yeah yeah. and they weren't welcomed either like uh like i think unlike um when the black loyalists came up in the uh like 1782 there wasn't there was an actual active uh effort to have these once the war of 1812 was over there was an active effort to get these black refugees out of nova scotia the aftermath of the war brought new challenges the treaty of ghent which ended the conflict did not specifically address the fate of these newly liberated black people this left many unsure of their status as the legal terms of their freedom was not clear British authorities in Nova Scotia did not fully embrace the approximately 2,000 black refugees that landed on the shores of the province. In 1817, Lieutenant Governor Lord Dalhousie recommended to the British government that these refugees be returned to the United States or sent to Sierra Leone. However, his perspective shifted after he visited the refugees and discovered that, quote unquote, none of them are willing to return to their masters or to America. This insight led him to discard that plan. Instead, Dalhousie embarked on a campaign to resettle the black refugees elsewhere, eventually arranging for their relocation to Trinidad. Despite his extensive efforts to convince them to leave Nova Scotia, only 95 refugees chose to emigrate to Trinidad in 1821. The majority opted to remain in Nova Scotia where they had built lives for themselves. The black refugees settled in various communities around Nova Scotia, including Preston, Hammonds Plains, Beachville, also known as Refugee Hill, Five Miles Plains, Beaver Bank, Prospect Road, Halifax, Dartmouth, and other areas. These settlements became important centers of black Canadian history, where the refugees established communities, churches, and cultural institutions that continue to be part of the heritage of Nova Scotia and Canada as a whole. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah. actually led by um, the lieutenant government, the British lieutenant government at the time, Lord Dalhousie. Yeah. 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 So that was like an active thing that he was trying to do. And I, I don't know. I, I always assumed that a lot of the people, a lot of the black uh, refugees that came up in the War of 1812, a lot of them left. Mm-hmm. But um, it 
what I found is only 95 of the 2,400. Um, what, took, went back to the States? Not not to the States. They actually, they would never, none of them wanted to go back to the States. <laughs> yeah. Wanted to go back to, wanted to go back to master, right? So they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they actually, um, the, the, what, what Dalhousie arranged was for them to go to Trinidad. Mm. But there was only 95 of them. Oh, went, wow. So then the other ones went to Sierra Leone, I guess. No, no, this no? that's the thing, right? The Sierra Leone stuff was just the black loyalists. Okay. That was it. Like these people from 1812, they all stayed. Oh I, I always assumed that they did not stay, but they all yes. stayed. So though yeah. the though these the majority of the 2400 people, they made their their homes in all the the uh classic black uh neighborhoods. Or uh, communities, communities, communities yeah. in Which, in Nova Scotia. So the Prestons and yeah, Birchtown and uh, yeah, you know Shelburne and yeah, all those places. And uh, yeah, um, I think there is, I think there is about forty communities, mm. uh, black led communities that were thriving independently. And sadly, continue with the mistreatment. The 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 whites actually hated the fact that they had so much independence. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they were actually making this work. But yet in their mind, they were still seen as, you know, the, the white's mind, white people's mind, they were still seen as marginalized and always mm. viewed as slaves. So, yeah. you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's what we've always been up against. And obviously the government always had a play in it because they wanted them gone as well and wouldn't mm. grant them the proper things they needed for the land that they were promised to get uh you know just the same thing in prestons and everything like that uncultivated land that they could yeah. you know and then there was the summer there was a i think it was deemed um a time without summer when the land froze until june in really? nova scotia and the the blacks uh the, you know all their crops got depleted and there was also uh uh this sort of thing that happened where mice uh swept through the regions and really also decimated what little they were able mm -hmm. to cultivate so they were always up against you know the environment uh, not yeah. only land and what they were given also the social economic environment which mm. they were never ever allowed to be seen as equal because with the the influx of immigrations of the whites that came competition became greater for the jobs blacks were were marginalized yet again they weren't they weren't able to get equal pay so you know this is the thing that you look at and you, mm. as a whole you like no wonder we can't get ahead if these things are still you know holding us back well yeah it's uh these these uh traumas are passed down Mm -hmm. I know we, I know we, we, as, uh, we, as black Canadians have, have overcome quite a bit, but these traumas are passed down, yeah. um, in, in the way that we deal with things and even just, uh, uh, generational wealth as well, that, that has kind of escaped a lot of our, our, yeah. um, a lot of our, uh, community, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, for sure. uh, yeah. The, the, this, uh, I was expecting to find, cause I think we, we had a guest. Mm -hmm. I won't. I that uh, kind of made an off the cuff remark about um, how most of these black refugees that came up in the War of 1812 left. Yeah, but that is not the case, and it's no, documented. Yeah. They actually like a lot of these 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 refugees that came up. That uh, oh, half of their numbers they were part of some sort of family units. So these are whole families mm -hmm. yeah. that escaped. You know, um, these these places like um, uh, Georgia, Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, Virginia, they escaped yeah. these places, yeah. but there were whole families yeah, 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 on the run. Yeah. Can you imagine that, Matt? Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. So that's that, you know, so once they got here, they stayed. Yeah. Well, and, and say, adding to that, that I read that there was a group that were, they 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 really wanted to make it. Because, you know, the grass wasn't greener, obviously, where they came from. Yeah. And the grass wasn't green here because there was none. <laughs> but uh, but they but they were they were free. 
The black refugees who settled in Nova Scotia after the War of 1812 faced challenging living conditions, yet they were determined to stay and live free. Their resolve to build new lives in the face of adversity is a testament to their strength and resilience. Upon arriving in Nova Scotia, the black refugees found themselves in a region that was struggling economically, with limited resources and opportunities. They faced discrimination and prejudice, both from some members of the local population and from British authorities who were uncertain about their presence. Housing was often rudimentary, with many refugees living in makeshift shelters or overcrowded conditions. Jobs were scarce, and those that were available often paid very little. Despite these challenges, the refugees persevered, working as laborers, farmers, and skilled craftsmen to make ends meet. Their determination to stay in Nova Scotia and live free was fueled by a deep desire for independence and autonomy. Many had fled slavery in the United States, risking their lives to seek freedom with the British forces during the war. For them, Nova Scotia represented a chance to build a better future for themselves and their families, away from the torment and misery of slavery. These refugees formed tight-knit communities in Nova Scotia, supporting each other through the hardships they faced. Their determination to stay and thrive in Nova Scotia despite the challenges speaks volumes about their strength of character and their unwavering commitment to freedom. Yeah. And, uh, and what I found uh, amazing is how the resilience of these sort of black communities sort of wanted to lift themselves up. Every black community thrived independently, business wise. They all had a church. They all had schools. And uh, with one of the max ex- exodus, why it even some of the people that were left over from the 1812, they suffered because in the Exodus, a lot of the, even to Sierra alone, a lot of the the teachers and the community leaders decided to leave. So yeah. therefore, coming from a fractured family and being on a slave plantation, all of a sudden, the community that was here and you thought we're going to make a go out of it was also fractured as well. So, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, um, that Exodus, that that went to uh, Sierra Leone. Um, I think, yeah, you're right. It probably hurt the community. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, the conditions that they were dealing with and and the broken promises of the British and the, the, you know, the prom, the broken promises of the British government uh, continued throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of amazing that the, the other big uh, uh, migration of, uh, of, of black refugees and immigrants that came up was, on my grandfather's side, which just came from the Caribbean, which is around mm-hmm. the 1900s. Right. Um, it's surprising that it actually happened, considering the history yeah. of uh, British broken promises, man. Well, if you look at the timeline, in 1783 to 85, approximately 3,000 Black loyalists arrived in Nova Scotia. In 1792, approximately 1,200 Black loyalists leave Halifax for Sierra Leone. Yeah. In 1796, over 500 Jamaican Roos, Maroons arrive in Nova Scotia, mainly to help with slave labor and built the Citadel. Mm. Um, and then in 1800, uh, nearly all the Jamaican Maroons leave Halifax for Sierra yeah. Leone. So, yeah. you know, that's the ones left over had to deal with the the cracks. <laughs> yeah, like it's 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 amazing that um, like the 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 refugees that came in after the War of 1812, they stuck through. Yeah, yeah. They Make stuck it. through, right? But that also tells you the brutality that they left. Like exactly. all, all this uh this this new narrative that's coming out of the states about oh slavery wasn't so bad. Well, I guess it was, man. If <laughs> you're you're picking up and taking your whole family. Yeah. Traveling to, uh, to the traveling to New York to get onto a, you know, a a boat to go somewhere where you don't even know what's going to happen. So yeah, like you know, I mean, and that's a testament of to sort of all the narrative that's coming out too with how many black revolts there actually were. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. there were a lot of them. They did not want to sit down and take what they were given, but you know, in in some situations what could you do? Like yeah. it was it was pure it was a pure um pure resilience mm. <laughs> for 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 the blacks that you know, we're slaves, not yeah. to mention just people of color all over the world who are slaved all. And I'm just being real, man. 
all because of colonialism you know what i yeah, mean like yeah. in in different situations especially here in mm -hmm. europe a bit different but still uh yeah. those powers that be wanted to conquer those those parts of the world as yeah. well right yeah yeah, yeah. You have been listening to Down Home. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. On a high plateau, from the one down below to the future of the funk, getting lost in the flow. Contact with the spot, my gex. Now it's time to flex with the force from the soul, reaching all aspects, getting deep. No time to sleep as you reach your next phase, laying it all on the line. New trail start to blaze, it's a fire inside. A brand new path, breaking down the sum to one, feeling free. I just laugh with the joy. The of song, the boy. Just breaking new alive. ground. From the breakdown, the vibe like magic prescribed, only to see the perfect blend like a diamond in the rough, ready to drop a perfect gem. It's time to shine so fine to see what you find. Revolution starts.